PhD to talk about Tibet and group business philosophy in general. Adam and Mike, welcome to It's Only Money. How are you doing? Your label, let's start with that, Grand Royal. Tell us about Grand Royal and what the acts are and how successful it's been. Mike? Well, we that turn to Mike, of course, because you are the business part of this. Okay, tell us about Grand yeah. Royal. Uh, I'll start on the sexy startup of Grand Royal. No, uh, I know we started around 1992, so about five years ago. The first group we put out was a band called Luscious Jackson, who are now on their second album, Natural Ingredients, doing quite well. Mm -hmm. so I guess they have a gold record now, so that's really good. And then the record, the groups, I, we started in L.A., and it was just sort of something we wanted to do for a while. It was just, you know, people who are our friends, who are musicians, came to us and said, hey, could you connect us with this person or that person, or do you know anyone who might be interested in putting what we're doing out in the world? And then we kind of thought, well, instead of just giving something we really like, to somebody, why don't we just help these people out and just put it out ourselves and make it available? And then, of course, we had no idea what was actually involved and sort of had to build a, a business from that, but it was sort of the music was the basis of all that. And in building this business, how important was the social stand, being socially responsible as far as the philosophy, both business, professional, and as a performing artist in the Beastie Boys? Um. Your philosophy? Well, I think with oh, you mean oh, being sorry. socially responsible, which Adam, I guess, actually mm -hmm. started with your feelings about a social. No, I, I wouldn't say that. I think it's it really is something that comes from from all of us. I mean, maybe you, I think we kind of get pigeonholed into like representing different parts of what we do, but I think all of us feel pretty strongly that uh, that it's important to be responsible um, for all your actions, especially in business. And I think there's this. There's this real concept in business that a person has to be uh, that that if a person is um, is working with uh, with certain moral values that that's going to inhibit their business and they won't be able to do as well or won't be able to make as much money, whatever. And I think that's a real sad view because uh, it's because what we do really affects this world, especially in business. And uh, and some of the labor conditions in China are are so insane and. Uh, and the, the human rights abuses there are just are, are so tragic that are going on in there and there's just a huge number of u.s businesses that are over there um just trying to make as much money as they can so basically then what what the two of you are saying and the group as a whole is saying is that with regard to uh the issue of tibet that is a philosophy that you feel that with your business success you as individual artists can support freeing tibet and also have those who enjoy your music and what you do to join in this cause? Well, it's both, I think, with our businesses and with the voice that we've been afforded as a group, mm -hmm. we're maybe able to bring change, because the only way that change is going to come to Tibet, because they're a fundamentally nonviolent culture, because of where they're coming from, is by us as Westerners and us as people in power somewhat, because we have businesses or whatever, actually using our voice and our means of affecting change. A lot of people would say that Generation X, the label that I told you as we came into break, is not one that I necessarily like, and it's not one that Generation X necessarily likes, but you're kind of stuck with it, as many other generations are. But Gen X, for lack of a better term, t is tending to be more socially responsible in a global sense. Do you, is that part of your philosophy as well? I mean, some people might say, why are you worrying about those concerns there when there are so many things here at home to be concerned about? How did this particular issue come to your attention and to your business? Uh, well, the Tibet issue is really important, mainly, I think, because, it, because it's nonviolent. And, uh, and so their, their struggle represents really a, a direction that I, I feel that humanity needs to be moving towards and for our own survival. So. In that sense, I think it's, it's really important. We're looking at a rally now with regard to this. Why don't you talk as we're looking at this rally about your Check Your Tags campaign and the importance of it and it being established? Yeah, we were helping to promote a hang tag campaign um, where there would be little tags on, on all the clothes and uh, certain designers, there are about 20 some odd designers, I don't know, Anna Sui and Mark Jacobs and some other people, Todd Oldham, uh, who agreed to put these tags on their clothes that, that talked about the, um, what was happening in Tibet and also that the clothes were being made in a responsible way, that they were going out of their way to make sure that there were fair labor conditions mm -hmm. and that people were being fairly paid. So that's kind of what in you a have, nutshell. You have records, a magazine, and a clothing label. This philosophy goes through all of those entities? 
Well, I think it's just sort of all these things were <clears throat> things that came up as ideas or things that we wanted to do out of ideas first, and then it's sort of like, okay, figure out how to do a business around that, or then we had to deal with the realities of business second. You know, it wasn't like, okay, go out and let's see how we can make the most money here. You know, so I think it's kind of fundamentally different. I think also one of the things that unfortunately gets labeled on, on our generation probably is that we don't really have a lot of ambition or that people don't know what they want to do, which I think it's all of all our friends is sort of kind of the contrary. It's like people are very ambitious, but I think the ambition is a little bit different in the sense that it's not about how can we all make the most money on everything we can do. It's sort of like what we're excited about are our ideas, and that I think comes through whether it's the music or the publishing or whatever, or clothes or whatever. Yeah, if I could just add one sure. thing to that. There's a, uh, I think that one thing that's going going on that's really scary is that uh, that our our government has separated human rights issues from trade issues, especially with regard to China. It's uh, we've completely separated that. Clinton has has separated it, and there's a. There's an organization called the U.S.-China Business Council that's lobbied intensely to have these issues be separate. And we've had meetings with the U.S.-China Business Council and, and talked with them about the importance of human rights. And, and at some points, they've given us the impression